Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with Coach Francis directly from the booth. And of course, we have to go all the way to the West Coast and California to find our co-host, Michael DiVellano. Morning, Pierre. How are things? Pretty good, pretty good. We are a great day today. It's going to be a great show. We have the Tampa Bay and on the lineup for today is going to be great and we have a couple of news around the league honestly uh, the big news yesterday at seven o'clock eastern time p.m the boston Bruins signed have an agreement with the rfa the number 14 overall pick in 2015 jake debrusque for a contract of 7.35 million dollars for uh, two years and of course an aav of a 3.675 millions you nail it, you did it, you said it, you did everything yesterday about the work that we, I don't know how we bring this on the table yesterday, but uh, you said that, we you know, you I was expect about 3.5, not more, $4 million, and yeah. is exactly what happening, honestly. Sometimes, uh, you know, you're right. <laughs> I don't know how uh, much is luck versus ability, but... <laughs> No, it was good. I, I think yeah. you know. it makes sense. It's a good contract for what he brings. He always, you know, he can score. He's a second line player. He's got a little bit of edge, but he's a little inconsistent too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, he's only 23 years old. He, he scored like last year, 19 goals. He has 16 assists for 35 point and 68, 69 game. And he's only a player at 13 game. He has four goals. Uh, he is at the top six. He's really good on power play and what the player they, they have uh, behind Martian, Bergeron, and um, Pestrack. I think he he do a role there. And I think the key you just said, consistency in NHL is not easy, a young age. And um, he's a one like anybody else. But, you know, I think he's deserve it. He prepared. Yeah. I, I think, you know, in, in term in hockey, we talk about a lot of time about uh, a bridge contract. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the situation with COVID is not exactly the great thing. So um, it's a win-win situation to give enough. I think Boston sit at $9 million on the salary cap. Talk about Boston, um, the manager, uh, general manager, Don Sweeney, mentioned he's a statico with um, Shara. And I don't know why. I don't know. Is it Boston? He's, or he's Shara? Said to what? He's a statico. So you have nothing's going on. They don't know. If he will sign, if you don't know, if he will return. Oh. Well, so. I mean, I'm sure Char is contemplating his future. And he probably doesn't feel pressure. I mean, I think, you know, there's a here's a guy four or five years ago that we thought might have retired. So <laughs> I think every year he's evaluating things. Yeah, so. it would be like, you know, what happened with Chris Chelios and those yeah. guys like that, just signed a contract one year at the time. And yeah. I think, I think for me, it's more about the quality live right now for him versus, oh, I need to play hockey. I need to go back on the ice, right? So my point to you is like, okay, he need to know how many games. He need to know is a bubble situation. He need to know more about what the league is going to do if they start and generate whatever it is. So I think that's more important. That's maybe the reason I feel me they are not having agreement yet. And I don't think he's too pressured. I mean, I think he's... You know, it's a shortened season, so I think a shortened season, that's our assumption, yep. will be attractive to players like this. Yep. So, like, older players, like, that's actually beneficial. The downside is if it ends up being a bubble situation, they might freak out. Absolutely right. <laughs> so, everybody is a bit of, you know, the situation with Sheva is not, is the same situation with Hoffman, Vatanen, and Armanek, and all those you have free right now. It's just all the old and waiting about that. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see that. Uh, talking about um, yesterday, we have a door signature, but it's not about the staff management. We always spoke, uh, talk about Steve Sherlock yesterday about the Florida uh, Panthers, but I want to bring you attention about oh, the yeah. Chicago Blackhawk uh, hired two people yesterday. One is an ex NHL player, Eric Condra. Uh, as a player development coach for them. And um, and also, one is really interesting. Uh, it's good for hockey. It's good for women. 
it, it is hopefully they will open more door for weekendizer we already know what granado does for the i think with seattle right now but i think it's good to have her at uh, kentall corner scoff scoffell is going to be a player development coach and the you and specialist of the you grow hockey and uh, for the chicago hawks so that's great to hear it's glad i'm happy they opened the door more to women um she did have a great adventure as an analyst behind the mic but uh you know that's not make her she don't know hockey i think she's really great and i think it would be good for hockey black hawks open the door for kendall to be with her uh, with them yeah we're seeing interesting stuff going on so it's good people get opportunities yeah True. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know, a lot of players are back on the ice. I have a chance to see yesterday a Jack um, Hickle with... Um, oh, nice. Geez, who was with him yesterday? Was oh, it, was Mark, it uh, Matt Taylor Sheffield. Hall and Eric Stahl? No, Matt Sheffield was with um, uh, with uh, Hickle, Hickle with um, uh, Jake Hickle, Jack Hickle, 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 jeez, and Mark... Jack and Mark Hickle, yeah. Sheffield from the Jets. This is, and, oh, Sheffield? Yeah, Sheffield. Oh, Mark Sheffield. Oh, cool. Yeah, he was with a coach, um, ex initial player, Adam Oates, on the ice yesterday. Oh, yeah, very good yeah. coach. So it was good to see them. And talking about players back on the ice, we have a story from Arizona. Uh, the Austin Matthew skate with Connor McDavid. Yeah, we knew that. Oh, I didn't. Did I tell you that? I'm saying again. Oh, when I was in when I was in Phoenix, they were both there and they were skating up the street. Yeah, so they are oh, skating right, on right. The ice yesterday. So the rumor did not hit. Right, did not take long time for uh, Sportnet to announce. Like maybe yeah, McDavid. Like a, they've been there for two weeks. <laughs> with McDavid with Toronto or Matthews with Arizona uh, with uh, Edmonton, and the beauty is that why not both of them see in Arizona play for the mm -hmm. Coyotes. Well, all right, yeah, good luck. So the the guy the I, we were scouting the 06s, right? And the skating coach for Matthews, his uh, son plays on the 06s. Um, he's a you know he's a good player, really good player. And I think they're Ukrainian. I think Ukrainian. And that that skating coach, I forget his, how to pronounce his last name, but he's a, one of the best skating coaches. Very very unorthodox, and you know. Both Matthews and McDavid have that style of not long stride, but lots of power and really powerful edge control. So they're both down there training with them. Yeah. So, um, you know, so it wasn't good. Boris, Boris, um, now I got to Now I got to look it up here. Here we go. So um, they was skating together every time. Dorozhenko, that's it. Boris Dorozhenko. And he's okay. Ukrainian. And then he's got a son with a different last name, but he's got the mom's last name. But he's plays down there for the Junior Coyotes. I see. Um, you know, that's pretty much around the league. Other effect, like um, um, just a couple of news. Uh, last news is the, um, the Jet Hire former NHL Dave Lowry as an assistant coach. Oh, Dave Lowry, very good coach. Was he not in LA for a bit? I think he was there. That could be wrong. Yeah, he. I mean, he was a he was a coach in our league in the WHL. Very successful Team Canada coach. He's a good coach. That's uh, that's a good addition to their staff. So it'll be interesting to see him with Adam, his son. I like Adam. Adam's a good player. Yeah, his son, right? Yeah. Yeah, his son's a big centerman. He's pretty good. Like he's. He's a decent skater. Um, you know, he, he works with uh, the Los Angeles Kings in 18, 19. He was seven years as head coach for the Brandon Wheat Kings in WHL. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good, he was a, oh, his son was. Yeah. No, him. I no, he was a coach. Was he Brandon or was he Victoria? No, it said uh, Brandon, Brandon Winnipeg. Yeah, Brendan Manitoba. Well, I guess he was. Yeah. I thought, for some reason, I thought he was the first coach in Victoria, though. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was. He only he was only in Brandon for a year. 
Yeah, talk about news. The yeah, but again, Pierre, he coached the Calgary Hitmen, but he he was the original coach for the Victoria Royals, I believe, at the beginning. Yeah, so they won two, three, four, five seasons of Victoria. Okay. Yeah, he has a long career as an engineer. Yeah, I mean, you have over 14, 13, 14 years as yeah. a coach, part of that part. So it's pretty good to see him to be a part of Winnipeg Jets. We know they already, uh, you know, a couple of change over there. Um, as a son coach, left a couple of people over there. So um, talking about COVID-19 situation around the league, uh, many, several Blue Jacket player test positive the last seven oh, no. days. And a little bit for Golden Knights player test also positive oh. COVID-19. Seven things. So they are not in bubble anymore, and you can see um, the situations going on around the league, right? Crazy. But that's you know, as a part of the what's going on uh, in um, in um, with COVID, honestly. Yep. So we'll see um, when they all have a chance to return and be ready to get you know. Um, to be back and healthy and you know a are, lot they, of are they sick is my question yeah like are they actually I'm, sick or are they just testing positive yeah exactly so uh, it would be very interesting about that one over there and finally before we go with uh tempo we like name it's a big uh, team to talk about right because they have a lot of problem with the salary um you got some challenges <laughs> about that so uh, you know what I mean? So it's something I think would be very interesting to um, to know what's going on with it. I want to mention a little bit. Definitely, it's a flashback NHL. And let's talk about the November 24. And what happened on this date in 2017, the Dallas Star retired a jersey, number 26. Who is number 26? Modano? No. Modano was number nine. Is that Lebanon? Lebanon, yep. Lebanon, okay. Yep. On this date in 2014, the goalie for the Pittsburgh Penguin earned his 300 career initial win. Who is the goalie? Uh, Tom Barrasso? Mac Andre Fleury. What, what date? I missed the date. 2014. 2014. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. On this date in 2008, the Montreal ad retire a goalie jersey. Could be anybody. What what year was it? 2008. Patrick Waugh? Yep. Yeah. On this date in 2005, the Buffalo Sabres do the same thing. Retire one jersey number 18. Who is 18? Was That wasn't Perot, was it? No, no, that was like eleven. Eleven, yeah. Who was number seven and Roberts number fourteen? Who was number eighteen? Captain for them play many years. Captain. Danny. Gare? Yep. Was he eighteen? Yep. Oh yeah, I guess he was. Yeah, that makes sense. On this date in 2006, with the Detroit Red Wings, uh, this player became the all-time leader in gameplay and USC-born player when he appeared on his 1,496 game in NHL. Reed Larson. Chris Chelios. Oh, really? Yep. What, sorry, what year was it? 2006. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't have been. Reed Larson was done with it. <laughs> In 2006, for the Minnesota Wild, he was the rookie, the rookie goalie, record his first career shootout in NHL. A rookie goalie for the Wild? Yep. And what year was it? 2006. I can picture the guy, but I don't know who it is. It's like the, he was like a, a Manny Fernandez? No, it was the other goalie. Nicholas. Nicholas. Who? Backstrom. Oh, right. Yeah, that's that's who I was thinking of, the Swedish guy. Yep. yep. That's right. I was like, I could picture him, but I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, he was a very good goalie for a long time. In 1997, uh, 1997, the Florida Panthers GM takes over as a coach. He was manager for many years with the Ottawa Senators. His name is? Murray? 
Brian Murray. Great, great person in hockey. Passed away, what, a year or two ago? Is it two years now? Yep. Okay. And this date in 1984, the Montreal Abs, Abs scored his first ab trick in his career, wearing number 26. Sorry, when was this? 1984. And he was with the Avs? With Montreal Canadiens. Oh, the Canadiens. Yep. And he wore 26? Matt yep. Naslund. Matt Naslund. Yep. And 1986, announced his ret retirement from the Buffalo Sabres. Joe Perrault? Gilbert Perrault. Friggin' great player. I hated him. <laughs> he was such a great player. So, hey, what do you think of this? So, you know, I remember I getting into arguing with a dumb person one time and they were they were questioning how great Fedorov was. And they were like, he's not as good as Joe Perot. I'm like, actually, they're the same player. <laughs> like, don't you think if you look at all the stats of Gilbert Perot and then Fedorov? Now, the difference was Fedorov could play defense and did for extended times. But otherwise, if you watch them both, how they skate and how they play, and their stats are almost identical. Yep, I agree with you. Was a great hockey player, honestly. Pero, if you follow hockey in 1970, oh, yeah. it was an amazing player. First round pick, overall pick. Sure. And the date 2000, you should get it. The Detroit Red Wing coach uh, coaches 2000 game in NHL. Bowman. Yep. And right. 1971, he was born in Toronto. Ontario, I uh, play for the Red Wings, play for the Whalers, play for the Canes, Hurricane Carolina, and of course for the Philadelphia Flyers. Who is he? The Flyers? His son is the goalie right now. Pre Keith Primo. Yep. That, that was a crazy that. draft, by the way. Do you so, remember how that draft went? Yeah. On this date in 1962. Oh, wait, you know who was the first overall in that draft? One Primo. The, so the year that Primo went, there were five players that went in that draft that were phenomenal. And the first round, the first pick, second pick, third pick, fourth pick, and then the fifth would end up being the best. That's one of the greatest top fives ever. Is it a 90, 95, 85? No, it would have been 80. 89? Jeez, yeah, what year was it? Yeah, because he's a 71, so minus it was like 80 93? No. 89. Yeah, oh. go with 89 because he was graph. Um hold on, let me think about this. Could have been no, it was 90. I think it was 90. 90. Yeah, it was 90. So close. Yeah, it was Nolan Nolan with the Nedved Primo Richie and number five amazing Jager. Yeah, and Jager like nobody thought Jager was coming, and then Pittsburgh scooped him up. <laughs> and in those days, like the Iron Curtain was just falling, right? So it was really questionable getting Czech players over. So for him to come over at eighteen was like crazy. Amazing, the, the Islanders number six picked Scott Season. He played only two games in NHL. Yeah. Uh, you have about like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 players in the first round pick after him. Well, look at 20, look at 19, 20, and 21. Yeah, Marte Bradar. Oh my God. Well, Keith Kachak. Keith Ketchuk there. Martin and Brian, Brian Smolenski. And Brian Smolenski. He was not a bad player. He was a very good player. I mean, yeah. Then you have Doug Waite in 34. Right. And then Jeff Sanderson number at the 36. Crazy. Yeah. And but then, yeah. <laughs> Arguably, maybe the top three players of all time or four players would be Yager. Then in round number three, you talk about the Red Wings got Bessel Lab got Slav. Well, that draft for the Wings was pretty crazy, right? Because they got um they got Primo Kozlov. Oh no, it was the other year that they got all those guys. I think it was 
When did they draft um, Fedorov? Yeah, but earlier. I think. It was the prior year. So the prior year, they got Lidstrom, they got Sillinger, Bob Bugner, but then they picked Nick Lidstrom, Fedorov. They got Dallas Drake, who also played. They got Konstantinov in that draft. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Washington, the Washington Capitol select Peter Bandera at 156. He played over 1,000 games in NHL. What, what, and again, so it's interesting because that was kind of like the Iron Curtain fell in 89. And so it was just slowly becoming possible. Like, well, we're, you know, what world are we in? And everyone's figuring that out. But what a great time. I mean, there's some gr I mean, great players fell in that draft just because of that. Like During that time, they have 12 round picks during those years. Now it's only seven. Look at the top score. So if you go by top scores in the 1990 draft, Yager with 1921 points Keith Prem or uh, Keith Kachuk was 1065 Doug Waite was 1033 Peter Bondra 892 then Owen Nolan at 853 it was at 885 then Kozlov Zubov went in that draft Jamnov went in that draft Nedved was after that 17 it's amazing that Nedved scored 717 points but Robert Lang had 703 NHL points. Can you believe that? And then it was Sanderson, Smolinski, Primo, Ricci. Crazy. What a draft. <laughs> That's a crazy draft. Interesting. It's, it's always fun to look back at that stuff. I know. I'm looking about Montreal. Like, you know, like not only Montreal, but a lot of a lot of teams missed completely the boat. Like, it's so hard to sell. Was, that was a, I think that was a really hard year because you – you know, they were probably stuck in old ideas and, you know, there was still a bias, I think, against Russian and Czech players and, you know, but the, you know, people that took a chance on them really paid off, like even the year before. Yeah. They select two players in round number three from QM. They never play any game in NHL. And every time they don't select someone QM, everybody's screaming at Montreal. Well, our first, the first pick for Montreal, wasn't it Turner Stevenson? Yeah. So Turner, I don't know if you know, Turner is, was in Everett for the last four years. And he was, he was running our tier one program. And he's now um, got another program that kind of spun out of that when the arena destroyed it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was fun to talk about. Like that draft. That's such a great yeah, draft. Yeah, like, you know, that, so, uh, <laughs> great to see this, to talk about this. So, you know, Montreal run number four, they, pick, they select Gilbert Dion. Yeah, he he had a good old cup of coffee, right? Yeah, he was the brother of Marcel. Two twenty three, um, you know, Marcel is back in Ontario now. He have a restaurant in Saint Catherine. Is it Saint Catherine? No. Oh, does he? He, he have a restaurant uh, on the borders. Is it called the Little Beaver? <laughs> no, but he called um, Marcel Dion. I don't know. He have a. The, I read about this a couple of years ago. I'll look that up. I wonder, ho hopefully, it's, it's probably shut. Everything's closed in Toronto for 30 days. That's crazy, huh? That's ridiculous. That's amazing. But today, we talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning. I want to have you to bring your point about that team because I believe the Boston Bruins going to offer Mikhail Sokachev a new contract in the next couple of weeks. Mm, I doubt it. Why not? I don't think anybody's going to do any of that stuff. Why not? Yeah. What what will it cost them, Pierre? It'll cost them five first round picks. That ain't happening. Not at all. You can get a contract under eight million dollars. Imagine this right now. If if Boston offer him eight million dollars for now five years to suck and share. How many picks? Only two. That's it? Really? Yeah, I think so. I don't think so. You have over because how have the same thing last year. Two con it's a little bit more pick, like maybe four of them, like two first and one two and one three, I believe. Okay. Um, um, you have to hit nine million or eight point five to get that third round pick, I believe. I gotta find that. Wow, that's kind of. <clears throat> if that's the case, I mean, that seems like an. Uh, my point is, I would make Tampa Bay and the Pat situation. It, it would, I mean, it's logical. All right, let's see here. Wow, that's it? 
You got why, it. Why do two first round picks, a second and a third? You do that with your eyes closed. Yeah. You can give the guy eight point five. It's eight point four to ten. So if it's all if it's six point three to eight point four, it's one first round pick, a second and a third. What? Yep. Why do people not do this more? <laughs> I would like. That's a good wow, point. Wow, that is not bad. You, because now you get circuit chef for about ten years. Easy. Yeah, that. I mean, I hope it's not Boston. I could care less about Boston. <laughs> Um, it would be a smart move for Nashville or Boston or any any of these teams that have cap, right? But Boston could use him. They could really use that. So then the question becomes, do does Tampa match? And they it would be really tough. They'd have to jettison so much salary. I don't think it'd be possible to match. Everything over $7 million, Tampa Bay have to figure out something else. Right. You said like $2 million right now, they, they struggle. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. All right, well, um, we know that the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup after many kicks of the can. John Cooper, Julian Brisebois finished the job with arguably a very um, stacked lineup that's been stacked for a while. Like, they're very good, and I think the patience paid off. This is a team that we thought might have won one before, but for different crazy reasons never got there, including having injuries to major players. And yet again in the playoffs, they have a major injury to their second leading scorer in Steven Stamkos. Um, so we know that they they try. So congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was a very good playoff. It was maybe one of the best playoffs ever. I really enjoyed having the 24 teams, and we know it was very tough for players to be in the bubble. Um they really took a crack at it by loading up on lots of D and lots of extra forwards. And, but in the end, they still have a lot of prospects that are reasonable and all their players are at their prime. Like they conceivably could come back and win another cup. And now we know that a consequence of winning is salary cap. So they're gonna have to figure something out. The first guy they tried to dangle out there was Tyler Johnson. I'm so, I was actually very surprised nobody picked him up. Like, I think he had a little bit of a down year, but he, you know, if you play him at center, he's a very uh, effective offensive player. I mean, he's now, he's a 1990 birth year. Who you so talking about? Pretty, what's that? Who do you talk about? Tyler Johnson. So they tried to, they tried to dangle him and remove, you know, get that off their books. Right. And nobody bid on it. Um, I was actually a little surprised. Like I would have thought somebody would have grabbed him because he's a very good player. I mean, uh, Mikhail Sergachev and Sorelli, or is it Sorella or Sorelli? I got them mixed up. It's Sorelli. Sorelli. Yeah, I was there's a Joe Sorella with someone else. Um, Joe Sorella for the New Jersey Devils. Yep. Number yep. two. Um, good defenseman came from Oshawa Generals, didn't he? Was he play with Ken Danico those years? No. A little before, but yeah, during that era, yeah. Um, so Sergeyev and Sorelli are kind of notable RFAs that we'll look at. And to your point, you know, especially given the compensation we just reviewed, they're, you know, it's risky to have them unsigned. So they've got to figure something out. They obviously want to keep both of them. Sergeyev to me is worth more, but, you know, they like Sorelli. And it's not that I dislike him. I just think some of the numbers they're talking about are ridiculous. But we'll see what happens. Um, I know that there's been talk of moving a Steven Stamkos. You know, if I'm in that situation, I'd never move a Stamkos. The guy's a 34 to 40 goal scorer that is only 8.5. But, you know, he's getting older. He's 1990, and they did not need him to win. So it's logical that there would be talk of that to keep guys like Sergachev and Sorelli. Um, and they probably don't lose much because they won anyway, right? So as long as Hedman and Kucherov are, and Point are healthy, then there's a lot of other pieces that are more valuable maybe. But, you know, they might they might try to move them. Um, I would think there would be a big market for them. They might even have to retain a little salary. I don't know. It's, it's a weird time, right, just because of what's going on. Gage Gonsalves, I will mention, who was their second-round draft pick, is an Everett Silvertip. Gage is a little bit late blooming, 2001. He had one goal two seasons ago, and then last year he scored 38 <laughs> or 33. He was a machine. 
Um, I saw it in, so they get a very good player and he's very talented. He's also at the world junior camp right now. Uh, Jeff Finley was their first pick. So he's a big defenseman, right? Like, is that the same guy I'm thinking of? Or is he a forward that's really big? As dad, didn't he, he has a dad that played in the NHL, wasn't he? Um, he was a center. The center, but is his dad, was he related to the other Jeff Finley? Let's talk about Jeff Finley. Oh, Jack. I'm sorry. I put Jeff in. No, no. He's Jack, his name, but he's, he's, his dad was not Jeff. I don't know. Let me check. I, for some reason, I thought there was a connection, but maybe it's just a coincidence. Yeah, he's a 2002 Jack Finley, and he's his dad is Jeff Finley. But he's six six. Yeah, he's six five, six six, and he's a centerman. He's a big player. He can play. So he's he plays for the Spokane Chiefs, but he's, you know, he he had 19 goals and 57 points last year for Spokane. So we saw him a lot. He's a good player. So they get a they get two WHL players in their draft, one being Gage and then the other one being Jeff. And they'll see a lot of each other this year. Assuming we have a season, they will see a ton of each other because we'll probably only play in the US division. So uh, they also still have Calfoot. They we know we traded away Nolan Foot, who I think was obviously the, I think is gonna be a really good player to get Blake Coleman. They traded away another player. I can't remember who it was. So they've traded away a couple of good players to get Coleman, but that worked out. I still like Volkov. I still like well, Matthew. Gave, um, if I, I, I'm sorry to cut you, but they gave the first round pick and uh, and Nolan foot. Yeah, which I really like Nolan. I think he's six foot four, power four that can score. Like uh, he's a good player. So they gave that up, and then they gave the first round pick became someone and didn't. Didn't Nolan, Nolan played in Colorado Thunderbirds, right? All of them play for color, color. I was there. Those yeah, they, Adam was their dad, and or is their dad? I was there. Uh, Adam was uh, his dad was coaching. Oh, uh, cool. You know those those Thunderbirds have always have uh, ex NHL player from Colorado. Um, yeah. Talk about Joe Sakic was part of this program. Pierre Jean was Chase. around there. Um, you know, what I mean, you have a couple of couple. Uh, you, you talk about uh, head shot, uh, Ed, Ed, Eduk. Hey, Duke was great. His we right. drafted one of his sons. So both of them are the twins, I believe. Yeah, he drafted he David, the defenseman, and then yeah. Portland drafted Merrick. So um, I think the forward would be great. I don't know where he's at right now, but I'm talking about when I was. It was only eight, nine years old. It was the time yeah. I see them, ten years old. Yeah. Um, the other guy that the guy that took over this year. For the 16s is um, oh my god, what's his name? We had his brother in Milton. He played for the Leafs and he had that contract after New Jersey. Um, oh my god, why am I blanking? He signed a free agent contract after getting 30 goals one time in New Jersey. <laughs> so, really? um, David Clarkson. David so, Clarkson. Yeah, he took over Hey Duke's team. David Clarkson is the guy who got a big contract. Right. <laughs> and then he was hurt. <laughs> yeah. Could never score like he did that one year. But he he's not, he wasn't playing with Kovalchuk either. Kovalchuk is why he got all those points, I think. But anyways, yeah, yeah. So he's, a, he's a nice person, good coach. I think that that's a good move for them. Colorado's got a great program there. Yeah, he is the best. Honestly, I'm not I'm not going to get shoot by Rough Riders, but uh, no, on the program triple A over in Colorado, yeah, the Rough Riders are a really interesting building in there. I don't know if you, you've seen that building. Yeah. Great facility, great program. But they're a little – they have a little harder time getting some of the top guys. And I think the Thunderbirds overall are a better – they develop a little better. But the Rough Riders at the 06s are really good. Well, the Rough Riders was owned by the owners of the US, USHL, the Cedar Rapid Rough Riders. So that's yep, something exactly. from them a long time ago. I was over in that area. Oh, cool. And, you know, then you have uh, – the peak uh, in the South Colorado with the rampage. What I say, it's a lot of four program for a state like Colorado. It's a lot of program triple A. Great, great program, both of them. I mean, so um, anyway, let's go back to Tampa. <laughs> All right, so this deep this lineup remains super deep. We know they got some issues here. I really like Johnny Gord. I think we saw how good and versatile he is. Tyler Johnson feels like he's on his way out somewhere or the other. You've got to think he's going to move on. 
it'll be interesting to see how they move some of these pieces around. But still, I mean, they have a world-class top five goalie in Vasilevsky. They have a top seven centerman in point. We realize how good he is this playoffs. Kucherov remains maybe the top two right wingers in the game, possibly. Stamkos remains a high-end offensive player. We know he had injury problems that kept him out. He came back, scored an emotional goal, and then went and sat back down on the bench for the rest of the series. <laughs> um, but what a great playoff overall, and they really capped it off. It was nice to see them win. So they remain very dangerous. I mean, this team remains intact. Assuming nothing happens with Sergeyev and Sorelli and, you know, and even Stamkos, they should be very dangerous again. And they have some good young players coming up that I like. I just don't know if there's room for them. There will be room if they move out of Tyler Johnson, and that would really help them getting those players in. Matthew Joseph would be good. Volkov's very capable. I think Volkov's back. Um, so we see restricted free agents. Cernak, who they're, you know, you got to pencil in in their top four, restricted free agent. Sergachev, who's not, arguably their second best defenseman, restricted free agent. McDonough is a big, you know, bottleneck here, right? At 6.7, it'll be interesting to see if they do anything there. He's only 31. He's still very effective. Well, he doesn't uh, play the level he was. No. I think he's on the day grade. Yeah. He's on the downside. Yeah. But if you look all the contract oh. right now there, yep. that, that, that's the, the big one over there. That's really hurt to get that one because, they, you know what I mean? Like, that's the only one. The rest, they are really solid. You have F Edmund. He could have – Edmund could have $9, $10 million easy. easy. Kusira easy. could be about – 11 12 million dollars so we talk about another five million dollars on salary they don't oh, have yeah. to put there and they're big done I mean, years <laughs> like the only thing i believe me i don't think um gourd a five yeah, it's, a high. High. it's a too much money for him yeah, too high um like because, these ones are kind of the weird ones right so it's yeah. like gourd johnson kaloran you know, they you got to think they're kind of targeting one of those guys. I think that uh, Braden Point at five, six seven is actually a steal. I mean, we saw how good he is and how important he is to this team. I mean, he's the best player on the ice most of the time when he's on. It's crazy. Yanni Gord's very good, but you know he's not going to play that role. I actually thought this would be a guy that D Detroit would target, but I think we've seen the move they made. They got Nemenstikov, which is also the other guy I thought they would go after. So that worked out really well. But Yanni Gord would be a great second line center on most teams. And he can play wing. He can play all forward positions. He's a little tank. You really got to like that guy. You can put him on I the power. It's a good line. I, unfortunately, he's not for me. He's a third line. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him at, at any level, top six, at, at nowhere. Uh, really? What to you said, the only thing I see me right now for the. Yeah, I think that's totally crazy because the guy, when he played top six, had 64 points. He had, he had 25 goals and 39 assists in 17-18, and he had 40. Last year, last year, I had a difficult time. He scored only 10 goals last season. Yeah, but why? He was, not, he was playing on the fourth line some nights. But because you have a lot of depth on the center, you have like, you know what I mean? Like, well, really, that's my point, though. That's a guy you could put on another team on the second line. Yeah, of course. My, my point to you, I have $5 million for the same problem we got yesterday with the Blues, like Bo Zach at $5 million, then you cannot get a third line at $5 million. Well, that, that's my point. Like, you could move him. A lot of teams would target him as their second line center and be happy to pay $5 million probably. So I'm going to, um, if Junior Bracebrough is listening right now, <laughs> maybe not. But if ever you're listening right now, take take a tip from Coach French you know. Your only way to helping your team right now is to trade Alex Killorn and Yannick Gord. Well, I think he knows that. I th I think that he would – I don't think they would move Gord, but maybe. But I mean, way, that will open up, Mike, $9 million, $9.5 million. That will – yeah. That's what I said. Those three – like we just said, those three players, Palat, Gord, Johnson, those five, Killorn, those are all in play. It's but gonna be if, one. if you are the manager of Detroit right now, and I offer you Gord Johnson Keller, and I said to you, pick two players there. Me, I would take Killorn and Gord. I would take Gord right right away. 
All right. So I offered both of them for your first round pick 2021. No, you're not going to do that. You're never going to do that. That's stupid. Why? I would absolutely not do that. Gord is, a, is 28, 29 years old. Clorin's 31. That first round pick's going to probably be a top five or six. I would I absolutely not do that. Next year, Detroit keeps their pick and they get a defenseman. They get a star you're defenseman. About Detroit right now. You're not talking about um, Tampa. I don't give a shit about Tampa. I'm saying if you're Detroit, you do not do that. <laughs> Detroit's not trading their first round pick. <laughs> but at some point, Tampa had to move two good players. Maybe. I, I, I think they've signaled they want to move Johnson. And then the question is, they could probably move Johnson and McDonough. I could see them moving McDonough, and but they'd have to eat some salary. So it's going to be but weird. That's my problem. That's their problem. They cannot eat salary. I know. So... Who won McDonough and in, in NHL and all? Wait, so are you saying you would trade Gord and Johnson to me and give me your first round pick? No, I said I but trade not, Gord and Killorn together to get a first round pick somewhere. But not Detroit. Detroit ain't yeah, doing it. Detroit was just like yeah. a team. Like you trade because he cannot get a player mm -hmm. back and he cannot get. No, no, I get it. I, I think that you actually might have to throw in a draft pick. I think today you would have to – it would be like the um, – Yeah, I understand you try you try like this. No. You might, you might have to, right? Because people – they are taking on like $10 million, $11 million in salary. It's sad for them because they are one year too late or too early because Seattle. Well, this is why, I, you know, they might tough it out for a year. They might right. figure out a, they might figure out something with Sergachev for a year and then sign him in the middle of the year, right? Because it's going to be a shortened season. But you know these guys are getting old. They're not, you know, like to move a Kalorin or a Johnson, they're replaceable. Um, even Palat, you know, if you had to move him out, Gord to me is the most attractive of them. Like I just think he's got a little bit more runway and he's very very versatile. We saw it in the playoffs like he can play up in most lineups so i think you two you're right like it's got to be at least one of them and maybe two yeah yeah because i don't think they have a lot of other room like you know it's the guy you would want to move would probably be mcdonough at 6.7 but he's got like friggin look at all these years he's got i just don't see that happening at some point he's going to get bought out He's 31. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six years left. But again, if you manager the other team and you, you said to Julien said, why am I going to get your trouble right now? Why, why you give me your trouble, your, your problem on my team? I don't need that. Well, they're a problem in salary, but not as players. So I think that right now, if you have McDonough on your team, what 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 share he wear? He, he, oh, he, no, McDonough, I think you're right. McDonough is a problem. I think that's a very difficult contract to trade. You would have to give up something nice, like prospect-wise, and I don't know if they have it. You would have to give up a first-round pick and a player maybe and get like a late first round, like a late fifth. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So you, well, you talk about you get McDonough, Detroit, but I'm going to send you maybe for uh, a round pick and I maybe send you a prospect or something like that. That's what you're talking about, right? I think so. I, I think they would have to say McDonough plus a first or McDonough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 no, yeah. Get back like a second or a third. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would make sense, but it's a long contract for Detroit. Now Detroit has one thing that most teams don't have salary cap and money. Like they have a lot of, you know, it's a rich franchise, right? So they, they could take on that type of contract to get a prospect or two. And McDonough would be very good for them. He would be an upgrade over pretty much everyone but Roenick. And so imagine I had, you Because Detroit had to keep the – they have to get their, their first round pick. Yeah, they're not going to give up their first for anything. But they, you're right. You're saying they would get Tampa's first pick? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you said, I think it would be like that. It would be like, here's McDonough, 
and here's Tampa's first pick, and they might even have to throw in like a Matthew Joseph or something. You know, but if not, you take that contract as Detroit, you get a first round pick. McDonough probably plays for your team and he's a top three. Like he's easy a top three. He's top two in Detroit. Me, I trade Gord, Kilorn, a prospect, plus my third round pick for your first round pick at Detroit. But Stevie Eiserman's not a crack addict, so why would he do that? Because <laughs> not getting they would never ever ever do that. Because yeah. the first, the first yeah, I understand. I understand because Detroit is not ready to win. No. Right? So why oh, to get, gonna get a top five? They want a top five. Why do they want a top five? They yeah. don't have a number one defenseman. Yeah. And you look at next year's draft and the top five, three of them are D. Yeah. I understand now. It makes sense also. It would take maybe a bad contract for one year like he did with Stahl. Right. He, and that's why he's saying, listen, I, I'm only going to – if you look at right now in that draft here, you've got the first pick probably it could be Brant Clark or Owen Power. So you, And then you've got Carson Lambos. And then you've got Luke Hughes. Yep. So you've got like one, two – you've got four defensemen in the top seven easy and then they got the swedish kid that i think might move up right so the big the big edvinson guy is six yeah. four and he can skate and he could move up a little bit but i, I think in the end a lot of teams are going to look closely at luke hughes and go so you're saying i can get luke hughes who's already he's six foot two and he skates like his brothers <laughs> okay <laughs> oh and he's a point of game <laughs> as a defenseman Okay. <laughs> like, look at what happened when people passed on Quinn Hughes. <laughs> and they've been sleeping on Luke, but, you know, what you don't realize about Luke is he's just bigger. And it took a – he's, like, doesn't look like this small, spready guy. He's a phenomenal skater, and he can produce points. So you look at – Brant Clark will probably go, like, top two picks, I bet. Barry's defenseman is, like, a legit number one defenseman in the NHL at some point. And then you've got um, – Owen Power, who's at Michigan, and Michigan's a powerhouse, and he's a six foot five, two hundred and fifteen pound guy that can skate, shoot, and he's a number one or two defenseman in the NHL in a few years. So that's I think that's who they're gonna want. They're not gonna give that up for some rental pieces. I like Edvinson from uh, Sweden. The, uh, he's really an interesting player. That's why I think he'll move up. But I, you know, I think there's gonna be an a, a arms race for defensemen next year. And we kind of see this every other year, right? Yep. Next year, I think you'll see once Clark goes, they're going to grab the other D, and that Swedish guy will jump up. It do would not know, do you, maybe not know, but also you have like uh, you have two players. Um, um, uh, maybe you know like Robert, Robert, Son, and Sweden, and also Pastujov from a U.S. team, um, and um, and NTBD. Sasha Pastuvav, Jav. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't. I'm not familiar with that player. Okay. Um, he has already like nine, fourteen point in nine game. Um, he's seventeen years old. Uh, let me check. Yeah, he's, it's uh, six foot one four. He's from Florida. That's the reason I'm talking. Oh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. You'd have to send me the name, and I, maybe I can look him up. And maybe I don't think I've seen him though. He's uh, already signed up with a Notre Dame NCA. Oh, is he? Yep. Interesting. Yep. Well, I mean, if you look at the draft next year, um, the top seven, eight, maybe are really interesting. Um, you know, but they could all kind of switch spots too. Like Kent Johnson, yeah, I agree with you. Up for Michigan. Owen Powers ripping it up for Michigan. That Michigan team's kind of stacked, you know, so it kind of maybe is a little bit um, inflationary that way, but they're both very good players. Brant Clark, to me, is I, – I mean, I think if you're Detroit, you really want a Brant Clark. Now, the finished centerman is good, but I have a feeling he'll drop. I think he might drop. Chaz Lucius, man, I've seen that. Have you seen him play from uh, Gentry? A little bit. He's really friggin' good. His little brother might is really, really, really good. 
I mean, that program at Gentry was destroying the NAPHL, and then he moved to the U.S. Development Program. I mean, he's a phenomenally talented player. He's good size. He can do everything. Kent Johnson was a player we had listed. Did we draft him or draft? I think we drafted him. Um, did we draft him in the fourth round or fifth round? But he was he went to you know the BCHL and then he went to the NCAA. But man, phenomenal player too. Like that guy is like. <clears throat> Really great good. stuff over there. Like, uh, you know, what I mean, like, uh, good stuff. We just want to mention before we leave, um, the about, um, the you know, what they have right now. They have like Joseph and the yep. back with Val Valkov, yep. uh, as a four That's crazy, and I didn't realize how old they are. Yeah, 23 23, both of them. Um, that's pretty much the defenseman. They have a good defenseman coming, I think. Uh, Cal Foot, um. Is really the one that really close to any yeah. child. Um, the rest they don't need too much at that point. Uh, uh, really. uh, it'd be if Sean yeah. ever plays in the NHL. Yep, yep. So um, really, really um, great organization built by Steve Eiserman, oh, by uh, Junior Brace. Well, great coach. Maybe not the my best coach, yeah. Cooper. Because his personality, but everywhere he go, he produced. He was oh. many years. He was with the AHL club farm. He built those team, and he does a very good job anyway with NHL. But uh, the USHL, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he has a you know the also Tampa have a great. Uh, he, they did very well on contract. We know that the Rangers. You know, I mean, so you have to pay the price sometimes to win. Why? Well, because totally. in the Stanley Cup, and that's the reason they pick up. Uh, Rand McDonough, they have to give a GD Miller and return. Oh uh, my God, isn't that crazy, Pierre? You know, imagine the, him with the, this organization. But again, Brisbane did a great move at the deadline to get Blake Coleman and also he paid a price, but also Barclay Goodrow. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you need that to win the Stanley Cup, like the signature of Patrick Marron. Marron, um, you know, so. Uh, I think you bring up an interesting point because that like let's look at how deep that organization is. Let's look at one thing here, which is just that trade. And there's other trades that are like let's there's a couple trades that are really interesting. If you look at this, oh, that's not it. Um, if you look at that trade, what they gave up was where is it? This is it. So they they moved to get Ryan McDonough. In 2018, Libor Hajek, who's probably going to be a New York Ranger this year. He played pretty well last year, I thought. Brett Howden, who's probably their fourth or third line center. Nemenstikov, we know, signed in Detroit. A first-round pick, who's Lundqvist, who's actually a good prospect there. I don't know the second-round pick, Carl Henriksen. But out of that, like, they were able to give up all of that and still when you know be – <laughs> very competitive. The other one, that's the JT Miller trade, right? So it's JT Miller and McDonough to Tampa. And then they moved him to get um, this, you know, shit, what's it, Muka Madulin? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> there, was a, there was a 20 wrong overall pick. Crazy. Interesting. It's always interesting to look at those deals. But not to divert, I think that this team remains very competitive. I think they'll figure out something, you know, to keep Sorella and to keep Sergachev. But you're right. Like, they could be at risk if someone gives an offer sheet to Sergachev. That is a small price to pay. I would yeah. do that. I think on, 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 your, on, your, um, on your line right now, I think the only one I would say Johnson should not be there. And uh, But overall, without him... Or you know, what I mean, like without. I think, you're right. I think they move. They want to move him. They've already signaled that. Yep. The question will be: Do they have? Do they lose a Pilot or a Kalorn? Do they lose a lose a Gord? I think Gord would really hurt them, but maybe not. You know, it just depends. You could move to me. You could move Sorella to the third line. Move out Gord. Sign Sorella. Stamkos becomes a centerman the way he should play. And then you move in a Matthew Joseph, you move up Coleman. So there's a, there's so many pieces there, Pierre, that they could shuffle it around and be in good shape pretty soon. 
I mean, it's an it's a embarrassment of riches. <laughs> well, they're trying to get it because they don't have money. They have what? They don't have no money. That's what I'm saying. It's an embarrassment of riches. They have they have they have rich people problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got so got them at least four million dollars. At least. Right. And I'm, I'm very low right now. I'm just I think, right. Right. I think you're low. Yeah. Like, you get okay. dollars. Uh-huh. Right. He's getting McDonough's money. And and then Cernak, I would said 1.5. At least. Okay. So I'm giving you an out seven point five million dollars. That's the lowest, lowest, oh, wow. lowest you can get. That's that Hail Mary hope. Right, like, and then you have only two million dollars, and remember, they have only eighteen player signed so far. They need to reach twenty. Yep, so like they, they don't have Joseph and Volkov signed. So you got Joseph and Volkov still unsigned. Interesting. So they got a tough situation, but they won the cup, so all is forgiven. <laughs> of course, you won. a very good. Yeah, I love those stories. It's Today, so you know I mean, whatever we're going to talk, me and you forever together only. I don't care because this is good stuff. We go from Buffalo Sabres. We went to the draft 1990, and that's all about. That's at the end of the day. I don't care. I just love it. Yeah, it's fun to see that. Thanks, Pierre. Good day. Have a great one, everybody. Look forward to see you tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have a great, amazing. Thanks.